Welcome, my friends. Thank you so much for coming. We're looking at Earth's final countdown, and this presentation that we're going to look at right now is, can I have the assurance of salvation? Well, I know how, can I know for sure that God will save me when he comes? Or am I too bad to be saved? Some people said, I, I, I'm just too bad. You don't know how bad I am. Well, we're going to look and see what the Bible says about that. By the way, if you have these questions, if you want prayer requests, please just text or WhatsApp to WhatsApp plus one two two four two 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 zero seven seven seven. That's WhatsApp plus one two two four two 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 zero seven seven seven. You can text the same number or you can just take off the plus one and go ahead and text us for the United States. Earth's final countdown. Be sure be sure you subscribe. Click below and subscribe to our our channel here. We really want you to subscribe to it. And then click like and then hit the bell. It go bing and you'll enjoy hearing the bell click. So, and so click the bell. That means you really like it and you want to have more, more coming. Our last presentation was Revelations Plagues on the Land. Had a great time then. This presentation is the costliest gift. The costliest gift. Our next presentation will be A River Runs Through It. So stay tuned. Remember, this is a continuation of Unlocking Bible Prophecies. That's our YouTube channel. We're excited as we open God's words and we look at Earth's final countdown. And we, there are three things that we always want to talk about. We're at the end of the book. As we look at the great prophecies, you'll see all through the book, all these great prophecies in the Bible have been fulfilled. There's only one more to come. And also, we always want to thank Mama and our parents and our loved ones for praying for us, mama's prayers. I wouldn't be here, you wouldn't be here tonight if it weren't for mama's prayers or somebody. Even Jesus says he's praying for us. And number three, God has a plan. God has a plan for your life. He has a plan for my life. Did you know this? Had you been the only one on the face of the earth that had sinned, Jesus would have died just for you. That's absolutely incredible. And it's all about Jesus. I, I can't say that enough. We wouldn't be here if the tomb in Israel were not empty. We wouldn't be here if Jesus hadn't ascended there on just on the Mount of Olives. If he had ascended on the road to Bethany and gone up to heaven, the disciples, remember, were standing, gazing up into heaven, and the two angels stood by them and said, the same Jesus will come in the same way, in like manner that you see him going to, to heaven. Jesus is coming again. Our prophecy puzzles just briefly. Only one world government, Napoleon, Hitler, others tried to create a one world government, did not work. There's no great reset. Oh, they'll try, but it's just not going to happen. God will set up his kingdom. Only one world government is God's kingdom. The dragon, Satan, remember in Revelation chapter 12, it says Satan is the dragon, the devil. He's, he, he will give his power. He will support the beast, which is a political power. Don't be afraid of beast. This beast in Revelation 13 and Daniel 7 and 8, this beast is a political and a religious power. will persecute and try to change God's law. The biblical signs tell us that we saw at our last presentation that we are living in the end time. The next great thing to happen is the second coming of Jesus, the second coming of Christ. The cost of this gift is our topic tonight. I want to share several things with you. As you think, as you look at Google, you'll see all kinds of costly gifts. One, one guy, he, <laughs> Ramon Armavomish, he bought his girlfriend, who later became his wife, one of the costliest gifts ever given, a bronze metal statue worth millions. Then there's the Taj Mahal, there are airplanes, there are all kinds of things. But the costliest gift is what we want to talk about on this presentation. The costliest gift is Jesus. For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son. He gave his son that we might have eternal life. That's the costliest gift we're going to talk about. Remember, if it's in the Bible, what? I believe it. If it's not in the Bible, it's not for me. If it's in the Bible, I believe it. We don't want to have, hear what other people theories and what they say. We want to go right to God's word, and that's where truth is. Shall we pray? Dear Lord, this evening, today, as we talk about the costliest gift, as we go to the Bible, we want to discover the assurance of salvation. We want to thank you for dying for our sins. 
we don't completely understand how this all happened, how it's all possible, but we know that it is, and we want to thank you for it. We want to thank you for Jesus, who came and died, and God gave his son, his son, that we might live. We thank you for your love. Give us clear understanding that we can be saved in the assurance of salvation, I pray in Christ's name. Amen. We were missionaries in the Congo. I well remember, it was this time of year, you know, when people are celebrating the, the, the birth of Jesus, and we were listening to things on the radio, and we had picked up Voice of America, and Paul Harvey was talking, and he told a story, a kind of an incredible little story, about a lady who had accepted Jesus, and her children had, and she was so excited to be in the church and, and, and know Jesus as her Savior and friend. And, but her husband, he just couldn't get it. He just, it just didn't click. And so it was, it was the eve of Christmas. And so she said to him, honey, come with me to the program at the church. No, he said, I, I just can't believe that stuff. I am so sorry. You go ahead and go. Well, she left. The weather kind of turned fast, and the clouds came, and it was evening, and all of a sudden the wind started blowing, and it got really cold. All of a sudden, bang, it was cold. He looked out his living room window, and he saw something strange. Birds started coming. They started hitting the window, falling to the ground, and, and all around, and the wind started blowing. It was, got colder and colder, and she, he said, I've got to help those birds. So he ran outside. He opened the barn door, turned the light on, and he tried to shoo the birds inside the barn. And the more he would try to shoo them inside the barn, the more they would run away. They were scared of him. He couldn't get them in. And in frustration, he thought, oh, if I could only become one of them, then I could talk to them and tell them to follow me into the barn. Just then, the church bells rang. And it clicked. Jesus came to this earth and became one of us to show us the way to heaven. Isn't that an amazing story? Jesus, this is the costliest gift ever given. I wanna share with you a, an interesting experience where we went fishing one time. We went to Iquitos, Peru, on the Amazon River. And while we were there, some said, you know, we ought to go by and visit this anaconda. <laughs> That's right, an anaconda. I had never seen a real live anaconda before. So we were on the Amazon River, we went to this island and this village, and they had this anaconda there. Uh, it's, I don't know how much, it was about 20 foot long plus. You can see all these young people holding the anaconda, and then I decided I wanted to hold it. Kathy, she said, I'm not going because I don't want to see any old snake. <laughs> it's just much too big, and so she wouldn't go. But here it is, I picked it up, put it around my neck, it weighed a lot. People had to help me put it there. That is a large anaconda. After that, we went down the river and we went fishing for piranha. I don't know if you ever fished for piranha, but the, the guides with us, they said, whatever you do, don't take the piranha off the hook. They, they threw some bait in, some, some flesh meat stuff in the water and it started coming down and the piranha coming. And so I caught one, this is my piranha. And the guide said, let me take it off now. He held up his hand and he had one of his fingers missing. He said, if you look at the people here on the river who live here, everybody has at least one finger gone because of the piranha. Well, fishing, interesting. Jesus said, follow me and I'll make you fishers of men. Follow me. That's what it's all about, catching people for Jesus. That's what AWR does. We go to all the world. We have over a thousand radio stations. We have YouTube. We have internet. We have social media. Like Cammy says, AWR goes where air goes. We go every place. John 3, 16, for God, remember I said that before, for, for God so loved the world that he gave. We're talking about the costliest gift, going to all the world, becoming fishers of men, working for Jesus. That's what we do. That's what God wants us to do. That's the great commission. Jesus said, go into all the world and preach and teach and baptize. That's what we're about as Christians, to share that gift, the costliest gift with everybody. Well, SMS, remember, Text, plus one, two, two, four, two, 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 zero, seven, seven, seven. If you have questions, if you have prayer requests, you're wondering about what we're talking about here, does it all make sense? Text the prayer request to us at plus one, two, two, four, two, two, two. 
or 0777. So that's 224-222-0777 with a plus one if it's WhatsApp and no plus one if it's not, or you can do the same. It really doesn't matter. Now, our next topic that we're going to come to just on the next presentation is a river runs through it. You won't want to miss that at all. But right now we're talking about the costliest gift ever given. It's more blessed to give, Acts 20, 35 says, than to receive. More blessed to give than to receive. I want to share with you from God's word a few texts. This is very easy. Actually, they're just four basic texts that tell us about salvation. Take your Bibles or write these texts down if you'd like to. Right here in Ephesians 2, Ephesians chapter 2, verses 8 and 9. For by grace, God's grace, you can't buy it, you see. For by grace, you have been saved through faith, and that not of yourselves, it is the gift of God. It is the gift of God. What's a gift? Can you pay for a gift? I remember one time. I was doing a series of meetings like this. We were in St. Petersburg, Russia, and I, I don't speak Russian. I read a little, well, the, I, I, I read Greek, and, and the Russian alphabet is written in Greek letters. However, <laughs> it's capital letters, and I didn't learn that. And I couldn't read the, I, I, saw, I saw this sign, I couldn't read it on a store, and all these ladies, women, were in this long line outside with their heavy meat coats on or their heavy fur coats, and they were outside in the cold, and they were trying to get inside this door, but into this big store, through the door. And so I thought, wow, what is that? So I can't stand in line all day like they were. So I ran to the front of the line and got inside the door, and I looked to see what they were buying. Do you know what it was? Perfume. They had gotten a shipment of perfume in. So that night at our meeting, I said, say, ladies, tell me if your significant other, if your husband or your, your, your boyfriend is, 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 wants to buy you a gift, what would you tell him? And they all said, perfume. <laughs> well, I know my wife, Kathy, if I'm going to buy her a beautiful gift that she would really love, she'd like to have a new dress. I don't know what you guys would like, but the costliest gift ever given it's not a yacht. It's not the Taj Mahal. It's Jesus. It's Jesus. Yes, it's more blessed to give than to receive. Romans 3.23, for all have sinned and fall short of the glory of God. Now that creates a bit of a problem, doesn't it? All of us have sinned, it says. All have sinned. That means I'm a sinner. That's right. Yeah, Dr. McKee's a sinner. <laughs> We're all sinners, aren't we? And we all fall short of God's glory. We all need God's grace. That's why it says we're saved by grace. It is a gift of God. So that's the problem. We're all sinners. Now, over, a, a bigger problem rises here as you go to Romans chapter 6. It says there in verse 23, For the wages of sin is death. For the wages of sin is death. Wow, I deserve to die. I don't deserve to go to heaven. I don't deserve the free gift. That's why it is a free gift. It has to be a free gift because of the fact that I'm a sinner and it says the wages of sin is death. But God gives us a solution. Isn't that wonderful? Wow, think about that. He gives us a solution and right here it is in Romans chapter 5 and verse 8. For God demonstrates his own love toward us and that while we were still sinners, when we were in the process of sinning, he says, Christ died for us. Wow, Jesus died for us. That, that love is unbelievable, unmatchable. It's, it, it, is, it doesn't happen except with God. God, our creator, he created Adam and Eve. He put them in the garden. Lucifer had fallen. A third of the angels were kicked out of heaven. There was war in heaven, civil war. Angel fought against angel in heaven. Jesus, all the righteous angels prevailed. Satan and the evil angels were cast here to this earth. It's Revelation chapter 12. It's very clear through there, a third of the angels. Satan tries to tempt Adam and Eve. Eve is disobedient. She eats of the fruit. And then they're expelled from the garden. And because of that, God gives a promise. He says, yes, his son will come, your seed. One of them will come. And Satan will attack him. When Jesus died on Calvary's cross, that was Satan's attack on Jesus, the gift, Jesus, God gave his son. 
And then he was put in that tomb. There in Israel, the empty tomb. The tomb is empty. And Jesus, after three days, as he had prophesied, rose again. And then there on the Mount of Olives, he ascended into heaven. And the same Jesus, the angel said, was so come in the same way that you see him going to heaven. Jesus, friends, is coming again. So salvation is a free gift. It has to be a free gift. has to be because the Bible says we've all sinned. The problem is the wages of sin is death. But the solution to the problem is Jesus. While we were still sinners, he died for us. Don't you love him? Don't you love your Jesus? He died for you while you were in the midst of sinning. Wow. I know a story of a drug cartel dealer. He, he was an assassin. He listened to some of our cell phone sermons and he, his heart was so touched and he, he texted back to us. He said, you don't know how bad I am. I have killed so many people. Well, God save me. Yes. The response came back. Yes. Yes. Sometime I'll tell you about my friend. I met in the Philippines. Uh, Wow, just a, a sweet young man. But when I heard his story, he was the number one assassin. Number one assassin. He killed the vice mayor of the city that we were in. Even He always completed his task. I'll tell you that story sometime. Why? But Jesus saved him. I put my arm around him. I said, I gave him a video projector to go up in the mountains of battery operated and share the gospel with the other rebels. I said, you used to carry an AK-47. Now you put that down, you've been baptized. You've taken the Bible and the video projector to share Jesus with the people in the mountains. God transforms lives, he forgives us. He casts our, our sins into the depths of the sea, the Bible says. <laughs> when we're forgiven, we're forgiven. Yeah. So how, how do you accept that gift? Well. Revelation 3.20, Behold, I stand at the door and knock. If anyone hear my voice and opens the door, I will come in to him and dine with him and he with me. If someone comes to your door and they, they knock, what, what do you do? Well, you go to the door and you, you ask them to come. You invite them to come in. Come on in. <laughs> well, that's, what, that's, that's, that's easy. So that's how you accept the gift of salvation. Jesus said, do you hear me knocking? He's knocking at your door right now. Won't you invite him in? Don't leave him out in the cold. Don't leave him away. Invite him. Say, please come in. And he wants to come in. He has to come in. Now, when he comes in, two things happen. Two things happen when he comes in. Number one, in 1 John 1, 9, it says right there that if we confess our sins, he is faithful and just to forgive us our sins and cleanse us from all unrighteousness. Yes, the, the drug cartel assassin, the assassin in the Philippines, all over the world, no matter what you have done, God says, yes, you are forgiven. You're forgiven. He cleanses us from all unrighteousness. And then it's really exciting. If you turn to the Gospel of John, you know the first John is written by the Apostle John, and the Gospel of John also is written by him. And it says there, this is thrilling. Notice, once we accept him, he forgives us, the first thing. Secondly, John 1, 12. But as many as received him. You want to receive him now? Say, yes, I want to receive him now. But as many as received him, to them he gave the right, the power to become the children of God, to those who believe in his name. He'll give you the power, the right, the power to become his children, sons and daughters of God. Wow. The past is finished. It's buried. I once heard a story of a man who was driving down the street and he hit a neighbor's dog and he felt so bad. He, he, he just felt terrible and he went to the neighbor, I, I killed your dog. And the man says, I'm so sorry. I, I'm sure it wasn't your fault you didn't mean to. Oh, no, no. So they buried the dog in the back of the yard and the, the man the next day went and dug the dog up and brought it in his arms to the neighbor and says, I'm sorry, I killed your dog. Well, it's not really a true story. It didn't happen. But can you imagine that? No, once you're forgiven, you're forgiven. And with God, it's forever. Your sins are buried into the depths of the sea. Giving. 
the costliest gift ever given. Jesus says, wow, it's more blessed to give, actually, than to receive. Give, and it shall be given unto you, Jesus says. I now want to introduce you to Abraham. Let's go to Arusha, and you will see for yourself the special experience that he had in giving. We are in Tanzania, a country famous for the Maasai people, known for their distinctive customs and brightly colored dress. They welcomed me with a native jumping dance. From a standing position, these warriors can vertically spring over three feet high. Their smiles made me feel right at home, and they even allowed me to carry one of their precious babies. I enjoyed every moment and fell in love with these dear people who received me with open arms. The Maasai have a semi-nomadic lifestyle. Even this village we are at right now is temporary. Every aspect of their lives revolves around their cattle. The cows determine where the village moves based on where the herds can eat grass. Cattle is their currency and their main source of food. Nothing is left to waste. Even their huts are made of cow dung. For a man to give away his cattle is foolish and unheard of. That's why Abraham's story is amazing. He owns more than a thousand cows. I have over a thousand cows and I'm considered rich by my Maasai people, but something was missing in my life. Abraham's heart was convicted at an evangelistic series and he became a baptized member of the Seventh-day Adventist Church. Most Maasai cannot read or write, so they learn from the radio. Abraham was overjoyed when he tuned in AWR. It was a topic of tithing that really caught his attention. <laughs> They spoke of faithfulness and trust in God, and that 10% belongs to Him. As his eyes took in all that he owned, he knew what he had to do. In that moment, he made a commitment. Like Jacob of old, he marked every tenth cow. By the time he was finished, more than 100 cows had been designated for God. My friends and neighbors thought I was crazy. To the Maasai, 100 cows is worth about $30,000. You just don't give away the most important resource you own. Despite the ridicule, Abraham remained faithful to God. His neighbors stopped laughing nine months later. They were shocked to see that many of Abraham's cows gave birth to twins and his sheep triplets. Cows rarely have twins. It's considered historic when they do. Immediately, everyone understood that this miracle came from a higher power. After the Maasai witnessed Abraham's faithfulness, they approached the Union President, Pastor Godwin Lickendile, and said, We want to tithe too. Pastor Godwin was amazed and said, Are you Adventist? They replied, No, but we want God to bless us just like He's blessing Abraham. And praise the Lord, nine months later, their cows had twins, too. Here is something else amazing. Every time a thief would steal any of Abraham's cattle, the cows would always return home, as if guided by unseen hands. Now thieves fear stealing from Abraham. I praise God for Adventist World Radio. Abraham credits AWR for changing his life. Everyone sees that the more he gives, the more he is blessed. Thanks to Abraham's testimony, today over 80 Messiah have accepted Jesus and have been baptized. And all of them now listen to Adventist World Radio. Abraham, what an amazing experience he had as a Maasai chief, giving so much. It's just an example, not much of an example, but a bit of an example. As I said, it's more blessed to give than to receive, but God gives us eternal life. Well, that is the costliest gift. 
Uh, it's not a yacht. It's not the Taj Mahal. It's not a special little statue or billions. No, it's a gift of life. Don't you love him? Don't you want to say thank you, thank you, Jesus, for the gift that you're giving me, the gift of salvation? I now accept it. If you want to say, yes, Lord, <laughs> I want to accept that gift. Would you just text us? Text plus one. Actually, yeah, you can do plus one for WhatsApp, 224-222-0777. That's for WhatsApp, plus one, 224-222-0777. Or you can text us if it's in the States, just the 224-222-0777. Ask us to pray for you. Ask us also say, I want to accept that gift. Please let the Lord know that I want to accept that gift. Jesus loves you so much. Remember that he loves you so much he would die just for you. And you say, yes, Jesus, I want to accept that gift. So text that number, won't you? And we'll see you on our next meeting. It's when the river runs through it. Our next meeting, when the river runs through it. The river runs through it. Don't miss it. It's exciting and thrilling. You'll be surprised about what water does. Anyway, we'll see you then. Let's pray, shall we? Dear Jesus, thank you so much for your love. Thank you for dying for us on Calvary's cross. Thank you for the costliest gift ever given. Father, thank you for sending your son. And this time of the year when we think more and more of the, the gift of Christmas, the gift that you've given us in Jesus. We know the world, Father, is all confused, but thank you for clarifying it. This is the costliest gift, the gift of your son. And we accept Jesus right now as our personal savior. In his name I pray, amen. Thank you for watching. If you want to learn more Bible truth, I invite you to subscribe below. Also click here to watch Earth's Final Countdown in full. And click here to watch one of my favorite videos. God bless you.